What is it, God? No hesitation. Isn't this the place we want to be anyway in our spiritual lives? When God's spirit speaks to us, we want to be ready to say, yes, right now, I'm ready. Give it to me. I'll do it. Whatever it is. Isn't this what happens to missionaries when they dedicate their lives to Christ? Wherever you want me to go, wherever you want me to go, send me. I'll go. I'm willing. I'm ready. Wherever it is, just don't make it Africa. That's what Gary said years ago, Gary Barker, and that's where he is. Samuel grew. The Lord was with him. And did not none of his words fall to the ground? Chapter 3, verse 19. There it is again. The Lord was with him. The second person I thought of was the Apostle Paul, giving his testimony of the events that are recorded for us in Acts chapter 9. No hesitation. When he saw the risen Lord on the Damascus Road, obviously that had an effect on his life. He said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? What do you want me to do? I'm, I'm ready. Because he recognized the greatness of God, and he recognized that God could use him. Now, he was an extraordinary man to begin with in many ways. But he was extraordinary when God entered the picture. Now, God's call to each of these men had certain distinctions. God purposely chose each person. God doesn't do things by accident. You were not redeemed by the blood of Christ by accident. God called you unto himself to use you and to glorify and honor him. Amen? But these people that I mentioned initially, they didn't understand their full potential until God revealed that potential to them. Every little detail of their lives was critical to God's plan, but they didn't recognize the little details were that important. The task is going to be too great for them to accomplish without the power of God at work in their lives. None of them were aware that God was going to use them until God showed them. They didn't fully recognize the potential of their lives or God's work through them until God's presence showed them. They only recognized their potential when they were filled with his presence. That's the end result. How are we going to know what God has for us if we're not willing to be filled by his spirit and by his presence? So how does this relate to me? You might ask that question. I had Bill read 2 Corinthians 4, 7 twice. But we have this treasure. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. We are nobody apart from Christ's work in his presence. And we mere mortal human beings, sinners that we are, redeemed by the blood of Christ, are filled with a treasure so vast that we haven't even experienced all of it yet. And this treasure in earthen vessels is so that the excellency of the power may be of God and not us. God, you have given a gift to us. This gift is a vast treasure. What is it? I believe it's the person of Christ and the dwelling of the Holy Spirit. It is not money. It is not funds. I asked pastors, how's your church going? Well, the offerings are up. That's not what I asked. I believe that if we focus on the purpose of God and desire to know the potential of Christ in our life and desire to know the treasure that is within us already, to expect God's work to be real, to be changed by the person of Christ, to do that which he's called us to do, which is beyond our expectation. All the other stuff, money takes care of itself. You don't have to worry about it. The focus becomes people. I hate to say this to, to anybody while Aaron is here, but if you want to find some money, Jesus did. He just sent somebody fishing. So I want you to go fishing next Sunday, Aaron. Okay, no problem. No, not really. 
I've never gone to save Mark, found the money in the fist. Never have. God has ill means to take care of all those things, but that's really not the issue here. What's really important is the potential of your spiritual life being lived up to by recognizing the presence of Christ and allowing him to use you in an extraordinary way. God has a designed potential for every one of us that he desires us to reach. This is why we grow in grace in the knowledge of Christ. He knows the task is too great for us alone, so he's Father and the Son sent the Holy Spirit to empower his people. And God has a task for each person that has to be done through his power and through his direction, not our own. We are not independent from God. And God wants us to recognize his presence is the key to reaching our spiritual potential. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Let's seek Christ at the beginning of everything. Let's seek to know him, the power of his resurrection, and count everything else as done. Teach me your way, O oh Lord. Teach me your way. I am the potter. You're the clay. I mean, you're the clay. I'm the clay and you're the potter. If we can only grasp and begin to understand what God has given us and ask him through his power to use the potential that he's given, it never becomes self-centered, only Christ-centered. There's no need for anyone to waste time wondering what God wants to do with them or where he wants them to go. Seek the person of Christ. He will reveal himself to you, direction for your life, and empower you to accomplish the task that he's given you. Let's pray together. It's a great gift we've been given. We don't have to sit on the sidelines. Say, Pastor, will you pray for me that I can begin to recognize the greatness of this treasure in my life and pray that you will reveal to me what your will is and purpose and plan for my life is. And may I focus on your presence and power in my life. Can I pray for you that way? You slip your hand up and say, Pastor, you pray for me. I just, okay. Thank you. So many, many of you. Thank you. Lord God, during this invitation time, have your own way in our life. And as we sing, have thine own way, Lord. I pray that you would uh, help us to make decisions that will honor you and give ourselves away to the greatness of Christ. In whose name we pray, amen.